Good morning, my creative friends. Dr. Manette Riordan here. It's about 7 a.m. Mountain Pacific time, and I am back with some painting in your PJs time. And this morning, I thought I would focus in on some mindful creativity and share with you some of the ways that I love to kick off my days with just some mindful art making is always mindful for me. But I am particularly fond of simple rituals that support and nourish me combined with my creative practices. And if you haven't met me before, welcome. I'm Dr. Minette Riordan, and I am really a lifelong artist. I don't know that I would have always said that, but um, I've had a lot of different journeys and businesses in my life. I love building businesses. But what I do today and that I'm most passionate about is being an expressive arts facilitator and creative depth coach. I really love helping people to see how art as process can help them bypass their overthinking mind and reconnect to their heart's desires and create a life of purpose and meaning. And I do that in a variety of different ways, including a new membership program we've cre created called Mindful Patterns, Mindful Patterns. And you can see more about that at manette.teachable.com as well as uh, I'll put the link in the comments too. And Mindful Patterns is all about understanding how in just 15 minutes a day, we can create a more mindful experience, a more mindful start or end to our day, depending on when it is that you love to sit and enjoy some quiet time all your own. So I'm gonna change my camera here. And I've already done part of my ritual. So I have lit my beautiful candle from my friend's Christine's Place New Glamshire in the Adirondack Mountains. It's a gorgeous fennel mint soy candle that I'm loving. You can tell it's already getting low down there. It's a really beautiful candle. It took a few minutes to say a favorite mantra. Today I was working with the loving kindness prayer. If you're not familiar with the meta prayer, M-E-T-T-A, or loving kindness, you can look that up. But basically it's a way of connecting to self to others and to the world to bring more peace and loving kindness to the world. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful prayer or mantra to start our day. This is a gorgeous mala that I made at a workshop that's hand, handmade, so it has a, a lot of meaning to me. Some days I might do some journaling or writing. Let's see if I can get some better light there. <clears throat> And I might pick a, a different affirmation or mantra for the day. And I often like to draw an oracle card or two, so I thought that I would do that with you this morning. And the mantra, you know, five, ten minutes. Again, none of these practices are, are things that need to, to take a lot of time. I love the artwork in this sacred forest deck by... Denise Lynn, this was gifted to me by my friend Leslie. Thank you, Leslie. And there's so many different ways to use oracle cards to mix them up. These are a new deck, so I'm still learning about them. I like them because they fit in my hands well. And I will often hold the deck to my heart. Just taking a couple of deep mindful breaths. And just simply asking, what is it that I need to support me today? And I have my kitty, Diego, is coming to help. He loves to sit in my lap while I make art. There's no <clears throat> right or wrong way to draw oracle cards. <laughs> It's interesting you watched me mix, <clears throat> excuse me, watch me mix this deck up quite a bit. 
And yet this one was on top when I put them all together because it's one that I have drawn a few different times. I love this gorgeous egret here. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a little bit of froggy throat this morning. And this, it says foggy bog, and it's all about patience. And patience is definitely something that I struggle with. I want things to move faster. It's why these mindful practices are so important to me so that uh, I remind myself of the beauty and benefit of just slowing down. So I'm going to take patience into my day today. Maybe it's something that you needed as well. I'm going to take patience into my creative practice here with me, <clears throat> setting all these things aside. So I just, I have some water here, a couple of paint brushes, and some Derwent ink tents, blocks, and pencils. These are one of my favorite things to color with, and you'll see why here in a minute. They're water-soluble <clears throat> pencils, but they're incredibly vibrant. Sorry, haven't, uh, have a new camera, microphone and everything and I haven't figured out how to mute myself yet. So that'll be uh, something that I get to learn how to, to do. So the mandala that I'm using was created by my son. I'm gonna put the link to my Teachable in the chat, manette.teachable.com. <clears throat> and you can find our brand new membership mindful patterns at manette.teachable.com and these beautiful designs were created by Connor and he and I had a very interesting conversation about cultural appropriation and is the term mandala appropriate for what it is that we're doing and we decided that it's not because these are not created with a religious intention, but with a mindful intention. They're really sacred circle designs, sacred designs created with a lot of love and care and mindfulness, but they're not intended to really flow from ritual in a traditional Tibetan Buddhist or Hindu way. And so within our community, we call these sacred circle designs. And we have a whole practice and process that we love to work with to bring more mindfulness and creativity to your days. And for me, I'm always seeking the spaces where I can integrate creativity and spirituality. I feel most connected to spirit and to myself when I'm writing and making art or when I'm out in nature. And I find that the more that I can integrate the magic and energy of being in creative flow, and connecting with my higher self with spirit, with the creator of all that is, whatever your definition of that higher self, creator, God, goddess may be, you can use your creative practice as a way of creating connection. You can hear my voice slowing down. So often when I'm coloring, I might be listening to music. And my Zoom button's not working today. Okay, so we've got some tech stuff to figure out today. It's all good. 
the more I allow myself to sort of just sink in and be here now, the more I can stay in love and kindness towards myself and others. And inside the Mindful Patterns membership, we have a growing community of people who love integrating creativity and spirituality into simple processes. And every month we share these beautiful designs, practices for working with them, fun ideas for how to color them, We have live community calls where we do some mindful meditation together and then spend some community time creating, connecting. There's two levels of membership and one level of membership will actually mail out six of these designs to you every month on this beautiful Bristol cardstock that I'm using. It takes wet media pretty well. It's perfect for watercolor pencils, markers, whatever your favorite tools are. Each of the designs is original, created by my son, Connor Dobson. And each of them has an affirmation on them. You can see the affirmation here is, I am at peace with my choices in life. And I thought that would be a great topic to talk about as I color here with you today. And I hope you'll grab a coloring book or your favorite creative practice and color along with me. Creativity is so meaningful when done in community. Don't get me wrong, I love my personal morning creative time. Quiet and solitary down here in my studio office space. So you can see these pens when, or these pencils when you add water to them. They just have these beautiful, beautiful vibrant colors. They're quite, quite spectacular. I am at pieces with my choices in my life. If I just allow myself to sit with that, I am at peace with my choices in my life. It can be a tricky one. We can feel a lot of guilt and shame about the choices we've made or disappointment and frustration about the choices we've made. And if we're not at peace with the choices in our life, it's easy to always be second guessing ourselves. And then we lose self trust. And we find it really hard to make decisions. whether that's lifestyle choices, business choices. We can get really caught up in the woulda, coulda, shouldas. I should have, I wish I had, why didn't I? We can just 
be pretty harsh with ourselves. We're so much harsher with ourselves, ourselves than we ever are with others. And now George is coming to say hello. Good morning. The more time we give ourselves to simply practice being at peace, the more we can rebuild self-trust. Definitely requires some courage to look at the choices that we've made and forgive ourselves. To deal with the emotions the painful memories, the self-doubts, all those things that rise to the surface when we think about the different things that we've done. And we can't simply wish those things away. It would be easy to just chant this affirmation, I am at peace with myself, and try to push away some of those other memories, doubts, fears, regrets. I don't know about you, but I don't want to leave this world with regrets. I want to leave with a peaceful heart. And what I love about this process is that it can allow me to sit with some of those feelings, to pour some of those feelings through color onto the page. It can be hard to know what to do with our feelings when they rise and come to the surface. And I find that putting color on paper is a powerful way to give them space, to move them out of our bodies, to be able to see them in a different way and not hold on to them. I think what gets us into trouble and what causes that lack of peace is holding on too tightly to some of those emotions and feelings. It's important to acknowledge them and let them go. And this is a practice. It's definitely one of those things that's easier said than done. but any way that we can learn to spend more time in the here and now. I talked about contentment in my live stream yesterday and comparison, curiosity, I like the idea of contentment, right? Just being in that space of peace with my life. There's nothing to change. There's only the choices that I can make right now in this moment that are most gonna support me and others. And for me, it starts often with self-compassion with kindness. And inside our Mindful Patterns community, these are the conversations that we want to have. We want to create spaces where we learn to use 
art and coloring as a way to practice self-forgiveness, to practice being in the present moment, to just practice being with ourselves and our thoughts. It can be so easy to be distracted by everything going on around us. It's easy to numb out with our favorite addictions, food, television, social media, other substances. There was definitely some challenging periods of my life where I used alcohol to numb out and relax. I didn't know any other way to calm my busy mind. And the more time I spend giving myself permission to be here in my studio making art, the less I need to numb out, the more present I am, and the more comfortable I am with my own feelings and emotions. There's definitely a time and a place for therapy. I'm so grateful for the therapist and different coaches that I've had the opportunity to work with through, through my lifetime. It taught me so much about just healing myself and letting go of the past. And then there's times when we just need a regular ongoing practice to nourish and support us to remember the things that we learned. And I just had no thought or intention really about color when I started, but what I'm loving is these sort of little more earth and sky colors. This is feeling very grounded to me. And you'll hear me say a lot that I work very intuitively. I also love these Derwent's I don't have to be too precise with them. Because I am gonna go with them with water. I just need to get some coverage down there. If you're not familiar with the concept of what a mandala is or a concept of sacred circles, the, the circle shape occurs throughout all cultural and religious traditions around the world. The sun is a circle, the earth is a circle, the moon is a circle. And the word mandala in Sanskrit literally means circle. And working with these sacred circle designs, each one of these represents all of the individual parts, as well as the whole. It's why I love working with the symbol of the mandala. To be at peace with my choices, I have to see my wholeness and honor and accept all the different parts of myself. And I find that art is the thing 
that can heal me into wholeness, that allows me to see all the parts. And to honor and celebrate the whole. some colors. Mm, that one's good. And it's really intense, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of this color down. And you'll notice I have some, both some pencils here and some sticks. These ink tent sticks are great. They're not as precise as the pencils, but you can blend the colors. You can get the sticks wet and do all kinds of fun things with them. My water is a little bit green here, which is changing the colors of things. There we go. Get that brush a little cleaner. I am not a perfectionist. In my art, I am really here for the process, not for the product. It doesn't mean that I don't love it when I'm pleased with the outcome, but it's not what drives me. What drives me is to be here Now, in this moment, just me, myself, and my supplies, and this gorgeous design. longer I spend here, the more I soften and relax, the more my body relaxes. If you find yourself in the creative process, whether you're writing, drawing, painting, coloring, notice if you're gripping too tightly to the pen or the brush, and soften your grip, soften your shoulders, and deepen your breath, slow your breathing down, just bringing yourself more and more into the space. How's it going over there? You watching along? You making art of your own? I 
I often will assign private coaching clients. This activity of just mindful coloring to help them calm anxiety, clear some of the mental clutter so that they can reconnect to their heart's desires and their soul's purpose. A place they can let go of those shoulds. Just be at peace with the now. You'll notice that I'm turning my page as I go. This is a great reminder whether you're working on a, a sheet or in a coloring book or a journal. So much easier on your hands. You have better control, better angles. Your hands happier when it's more comfortable. You also see different things. And you look at it from different directions, maybe places you've missed. And life is kind of like that when we look at it from different perspectives. We see it with fresh eyes or we see things that we didn't see before. So if you have something that you're struggling to make peace with, what shift in perspective would benefit you? and help you feel more at peace. So I'm just continuing to work my way around. My husband and I moved from Santa Barbara, California, incredibly beautiful place that, that we loved, to Loveland, Colorado earlier this year for a few different reasons. And moving is hard no matter what. And it would be easy to wonder if we made the right decision. But we're here now. And we made the right decision. I remember when we first moved to Santa Barbara from Texas 10 years ago, we moved around a bit. And being in that space of some place where we didn't know anyone, kids were starting new schools. It was a really challenging moment in that last day that we drove away from Texas, the kids having said very tearful goodbyes to their friends. We definitely second guessed ourselves and wondered if we'd made the right choice.
we made the right choice for my husband and I. I can't speak for my kids. Their experience was their experience. But seeing their struggles definitely makes you second guess, right? Whenever we make a choice, even if we think that choice is the right one or a very personal one, it always has an impact on others. And even though I know we made the right choice moving to Colorado, there was still grieving to be done. So being at peace doesn't mean it's easy, that the choice we made was easy. Sometimes our choices are challenging, difficult. heart-wrenching even at times. We can't move forward until we're at peace with that choice. We have this wonderful old doggy, total mutt. And at 14, he decided he was done. He was in a lot of pain. He wouldn't eat, no matter what yummy stuff I cooked and prepared for him. So I had to make the choice to let him go. This was many, many years ago, and I still remember that being one of the most challenging days of my life. And it was the right choice for him because it was harder to see him struggle and suffer and be in pain. There's a lot of times when we have to make choices to let things go, even when we want to hold on so tightly. And today I'd say I'm at peace with that choice. It was the right choice. Boy, was it a doozy. Still makes me teary. I love that old guy. It's definitely chilly down here in the basement this morning. There's something about this particular design as I'm sitting here coloring, just connecting to myself. It feels very safe, grounded. It has clear boundaries. I love each of these individual parts represents aspects of self. Again, it's those aspects of self and the whole. Also feels 
almost like a garden design, right? That there's many paths leading to this quiet center. And the more I sit with the design and with the colors that I'm choosing, it feels like it's a lot about boundaries, choices, and also flow. And at peace with my choices, I feel a lot more flow of everything, clarity, abundance, love. And I've been at this one for a while now. But if I only had 15 minutes, I would have just colored the center. And then another day, another layer. I don't ever feel the need to finish one of these in one setting. Sitting, one sitting, one setting. Sometimes they take me days and days to finish. But I notice just simply putting color down for a few minutes, just intuitively connecting to the colors I need in the moment. Shifts how I feel. find when I'm making art that uh, all of a sudden I'll notice I'm holding my breath and that I need to remember to breathe when I get really focused. quiet and concentration to get into these little corners. I can see where the colors start to bleed together a little bit and my inner critic likes to show up in these moments. Tell me to slow down. What are you doing? You're going too fast. You're not doing it right. So I come back again and again to, I'm here for the process. I'm at peace with my choices. As I get near the end, I can feel myself rushing as well. One of my favorite affirmations is, I have all the time I need. I have all the time I need. I don't have to finish this now.
I got some new jammies and they're super soft and comfy, but they're a little big and they keep falling off. Which would not be a fun thing for me to have my pajamas fall off in the middle of my live stream. I love these Derwents. You can uh, dip them in water and use them that way to get those beautiful vibrant pigments down on the page. Again, just slowing myself down to really get into all those nooks and crannies. And for me, I love Connor's beautiful designs, and I always love to make the designs my own. So I always will come back in with hand-drawn elements, sentangle patterns. Sometimes I just like to blacken those lines up again and bring some of those lines back. I'm feeling just a little scribbly this morning, needing to be reminded to let go of any need for perfection or precision. And this is a uh, Pentel Arts Hybrid Technica pen. I love it for drawing over other art materials. It tends to go on very smoothly. I don't have to worry about ruining the tip like I do with using my good microns over the top of other things. I'm not always patient enough to let things dry. These are not permanent, they are slightly water soluble, which also creates some cool effects. But I will often keep going with these designs. continue to personalize them, to continue to just be in the magic and the energy of them. And I'm not in production mode, right? There's no, nothing that says that I have to finish a lot of these in a particular period of time. get to just be here now with what is. And I get to come back to it later. I can feel under my hand that the outer edges are still pretty wet. I'm going to add a little more of these outlines. I'll come back later with more patterns and personalization. You'll be able to see the finished design over on my YouTube, or excuse me, on my Instagram, Mindful Patterns LLC. Mindful Patterns LLC, you can see a variety of Connor's designs and 
my colored or tinkled versions of them. And in the moment right now, I'm definitely feeling at peace with my choices. And what a powerful way to start the day. Feeling at peace with myself. I'm 57 and as I age, I find uh, a good night's sleep can be harder and harder to come by and I can be awake at two or three in the morning and all of a sudden my thoughts are racing and I'm thinking of all the things that I need to do, want to do, should have done, haven't done, mistakes I've made. So coming here in the mornings to this practice allows me to clear all that out and to be in the truth of the present moment, which is everything is fine. I'm fine. I am at my pe I'm at peace with my choices. And today I get to make new choices. best serve and nourish me. All right, so the rest of it's still feeling pretty darn wet. So I'm gonna pause here and get that a little closer and you can see the, the vibrancy of the colors but the difference between adding back those black outlines and cleaning up those edges. I know I'm gonna come in and add some white highlights as well. I'm trying to decide what to do in these two because these feel like water and I wanna just keep that sense of flow going. I love spiral shapes. They show up in my art a lot. We spend so much of our time spiraling in and out of thoughts, worries, fears, and anxieties. What if we spent more time in our hearts? spiraling in and out of self-love and compassion. That's it for today, my friends. Thanks for joining me. Have a mindful, peaceful rest of your day. Dr. Manette Riordan, Mindful Patterns. I'll see you soon.